Uh, Senator Dodd, uh, the Bush administration has invested tens of billions of dollars in the last six and a half years in nuclear energy, oil, uh, coal, and even renewable energies, yet in those six and a half years we've increased our dependence on oil yeah. and increased our emissions of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases. What do you think of the Bush energy policy and uh, can you name two th things that you would do uh, differently? Well, first of all, it's the first time in our history we've had a president and a vice president out of the oil and gas industry at the same time. So, yeah, and we've always had those secret meetings early on uh, here. First of all, I would just tell you, look, on, on the short term uh, here, I, I would have an attorney general and an antitrust division that would be working overtime. Uh, the idea of this consolidation of these oil companies here, raising prices, shutting down refineries and increasing prices is going to stop. Uh, this is an outrage, in my view, that you've had this kind of power concentrated to the point where one of the major oil companies had profits unprecedented by any corporation in the history of the United States in one quarter. I hear the gouging that's going on in my view. So that's in the short term what you try and do. And on the longer term, and again, I, I invite you to look at this. Uh, I want to be careful not to consume the whole day here talking about energy because I could spend all afternoon talking to you about it. Please. I uh, hear. Uh, <laughs> but I, uh, I'm the only candidate that's advocating an 80% reduction in CO2 emissions by 2050. I'm the only candidate that's called for a 50 mile per gallon standard by the year 2017, and I'm embarrassed to say that to you. As my wife likes to point out, her first automobile in 1983 uh, was a car that got 43 miles to the gallon 24 years ago. So the idea that we don't have the ability to produce an automobile that can be more efficient than the ones we're doing is infuriating to me. In fact, we're producing them for, for a market in Brazil right now that's using ethanol from sugar cane uh, here. And, and, and so the idea we can't produce a car for our own market it depends what you market, uh, in a sense. You keep on marketing stuff that are not fuel efficient and, and so forth, and you're going to have people who are going to make those choices. If you market other ideas, then I think you can get there. So I believe you could do that. And secondly, I'm the only candidate that is calling for tax on polluters uh, here. And I, I don't do that out of great sense of joy, except that I don't know how we're going to deal with the price differential. As long as the barrel of oil can range from $70 or $80 a barrel, what they're doing, today or drop it down to $25 a barrel and still make a lot of money in the process, then it's going to be very difficult for alternative fuels and technologies to be competitive. Uh, and at $70 or $80 a barrel, a lot of it is. At $40 a barrel, it's not. So uh, until it's costly, in a sense, uh, to continue to pollute uh, with fossil fuels, then it's going to be difficult to close that gap. So I'm calling for a carbon, a corporate carbon tax uh, here on, on fossil fuels. The tax would amount to raising about $50 billion a year. It's about 10 cents a gallon, what it amounts to here. I use that $50 billion a year to invest on fast-tracking the alternative energies and technologies so we can bring them online more quickly. All of the ones that you may be aware of, the solar, the wind, the biothermal, the ocean thermal gradients, hydro, all these ideas that are out there that deserve a lot more attention than they're getting, in my view, and provide some tax relief for middle-income consumers who would like to purchase those appliances or technologies, but the price is a little steeper, but with a tax incentive could, could close that gap and make it possible for people to do it. And I'm convinced that if you do this uh, and move aggressively on it, these alternatives can actually produce energy at a lot less cost than the ones that today we're relying on, not to mention being a lot cleaner, healthier, producing jobs as a result of developing these technologies. So it won't take long to do it. But you still may say to me, look, Senator, you know, a $50 billion tax, I'm sorry, but you're not going to get anywhere with that. Let me tell you what my answer is, and I hope your answer would be to people out there. Today, you and I are spending $300 billion every year, $300 billion, not 50, but $300 billion every year to purchase foreign oil for our country. And almost a third of that goes to nations who are very hostile to our interests here. In fact, some of the nations we buy oil from are the ones subsidizing the very thing people who are, our kids are, are facing on the battlefields of Iraq and Afghanistan. Here. So if you want to continue spending $300 billion a year, and probably more as the years go by, then do with the status quo. And that's what you're going to get, year in and year out. Or alternatively, talk to the American consumer and voter and say, look, if you and I do the right thing over the coming years, we can really make a difference here. 